This is one hell of a time to be having a Saturn return. No pun intended. <laughs> I have my Saturn at one degrees of Aquarius. Currently, Saturn is retrograding back into Capricorn and will come back forward towards the end of the year during one of the most monumental shifts in all of human history. So to be getting my Saturn return during this time is rather intense. The Saturn return, especially the first one, is certainly more intense because it is the coming of age kind of deal. You've gone through your 20s, you've experimented, not that you can't experiment after your 20s, but you've experimented, you've gone out there, you've made a mess of yourself, and then it comes to the time where you're about to turn 30, and life really begins to set in, despite the fact that it already has. Saturn, of course, denotes structure, constriction, it denotes social climbing, social status in many ways, it denotes hard work, effort, integrity, but also, of course, the opposite of all of these different things as well. So, these are the three things that I have observed during this first part of my Saturn return because Saturn, of course, will come back over. I'm getting like a triple, uh, triple whammy. I got the first wave, got the second wave, I'll be getting the third wave. So these are the three things that I have observed so far during my Saturn return. Number one, adversity is positive for man. Now, this is a really interesting one. I've been hearing this quote and I've been, it's been like swimming around in my consciousness for a while, my awareness about a man finds himself through adversity. And I think this really goes for everybody because everyone has a Saturn. But a lot of times we like to see adversity as some sort of opponent or a challenge or something that's going against us. And we seek to defeat that challenge or that opponent. We seek to defeat that adversity. Or a lot of times what happens is that people will avoid adversity for the sake of comfort and security. And this makes sense because if you think about it, Capricorn wants to be very, very secure in itself, especially materially. It's opposing sign. Cancer is the same deal, you know. Um, of course, Capricorn has said it rules over Saturn, but Saturn also rules over Aquarius. So, of course, we want to be comforted in our materialness, right? Um, but also emotionally as well. That's where that Cancerian energy comes. And sometimes these things can come into a bit of a collision. And a bit of a head-on but Saturn also does co-rule over Aquarius if you want to take co-rulerships I think we're eventually going to get to the point where it's essentially one planet per sign but maybe there are influences right so there is a Saturnian influence with Aquarius as well but what's the difference here what kind of security are we looking for here well we're looking for security as far as being able to relate to other people in particularly the collective but then you have the opposing sign with Leo, fixed fire. What kind of security are we looking for there? Well, the security within our own hearts and our own passion, our own love for ourself. Not a love that is overly prideful or a love that is more of a toxic vein, although I hate the word toxic now, but a love that is of a healthy love for ourselves to where we trust ourselves, we trust our heart, we trust our spirit, we trust our light and we shine it. There's another kind of security in that way. And sometimes when it comes to shining our light, we will find that there are certain groups and collectives of people that don't agree with our light or don't agree with our perspective or the way that we shine. And we may get everything from being shunned entirely to simply being scoffed at to just general disagreements. You have the extremes, you have the polars, you know, and then of course you have everything in between, right? So thus, it can be hard for us to shine our light. It can be hard for us to shine our light because we want to be accepted by a collective because we are very social creatures. But the journey 
The soul's journey, the spiritual journey is very individual, but yet we need each other because I have things that you don't have and you have things that I don't have. So when we bring that together, when we bring our gifts together, we can truly celebrate because we can help each other. We bring out the best qualities in each other. This goes for everybody. Nobody has all the answers and nobody has no answers at all. It is some sort of mixture. So Saturn in Aquarius has taught me that adversity is very positive because I have looked over the course of my 20s and I have created a lot of adversity for myself because I didn't have the most uncomfortable upbringing. I really didn't. And there's even a part of me that has felt almost guilty that I decided to incarnate into a lifetime where I didn't really experience that adversity, especially when you see the world up in arms the way it is. There is a lot of adversity and there's a lot of people that have suffered through incredible adversity to get where they are right now or to not get to where they are or not get to where they want to be. And they have dealt with so much, but it is through this adversity that man really finds himself because we find out what we are capable of. We find out what truly motivates us and what truly inspires us. We find out what is truly important and what we truly value. And that's important. It's important to cut away the excess and the fat because that's really what's going on here. To get, really get to the core of what is truly important to us. And when we get to that core, then we can really begin to embrace and accept and appreciate everything else, including things that we may not necessarily see eye to eye with, but we can see that even though it may not be a part of our particular journey at particular intervals of time, we can see that it does help other people. So what may be adverse for us may not be adverse for other people. But once we go through that adversity ourselves and we kind of trim away all of the excess and we get to a more simplistic and pure place, we don't shun that which we choose not to engage with. We appreciate it because it's all a part of this giant one spectrum. It's like we're all holding hands. Think about a bunch of people holding hands surrounding like a circle or a tree or whatever. You may resonate closer to the people that you that are in your direct vicinity and maybe someone who may be 180 degrees away or 150 degrees away. You may not necessarily get it, but that doesn't mean that you're not connected and that does not mean that you can't appreciate them. I have created adversity for myself in my 20s. And there are times where I have gotten really down on myself because of it and have forced myself to believe or believe in a false narrative or to really doubt myself because of these adversities. But looking back, I have learned and have observed that if I had not had these adversities, had I not created these adversities for myself, I would not be where I am today. And I would not know what I am truly capable of. And I'm of course learning that more and more as I continue along this journey, as I continue along this Saturn return and of course afterwards. That adversity is a positive thing. And of course, the flip is true. It can't be a negative thing. But I really do feel that it's through adversity that we really do find ourselves. That was my first observation. My second observation is no matter how hard you try, you can never completely control another individual. I'm not saying that I have tried to completely control individuals, at least not uh, like consciously. But I think subconsciously we do this a lot. Saturn and Aquarius, once again, we're talking about structure, constriction, and definement, Saturn. Then you have Aquarius, which even though it's fixed air, it's a very freedom-seeking, liberty-having, sovereign-wanting kind of energy. Kind of go-with-the-wind kind of energy. Very flighty, very spiritual in nature, the sign. 
of Aquarius. Very innovative, very electric. And what's interesting about it is, like I said, even though it's fixed and it would seem that something that's fixed is stable and not really wanting to break out of that particular definition or confine, what I have learned is that no matter how hard we try, we cannot control other people. I don't know, a lot of you probably think that that's contrary because you might look out at the world and be like, a lot of people are being controlled right now. A lot of people are being controlled right now. A lot of programs are being run right now. A lot of people are subject to particular programming, myself included, you also included, no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. But what I have learned and I have observed is that before I would try to control the narrative around me and try and control the people through wanting to help them, to wanting to be that water bearer. But I can only help people to the degree that I can help myself. And I realized that I have been doing an outside job instead of an inside job. Because spirituality is an inside job, not an outside job. I think what happens a lot of times is that even though well-intentioned, those of us um, who are on this sort of self-proclaimed spiritual path that do want to help people, it's not that our intentions aren't there to want to help, but there still is a lack of complete genuineness to this. And I've noticed this within myself because I would get frustrated if people, I would think like, why wouldn't you want to find your purpose? Why wouldn't you want to get closer to God or source or spirit? Why wouldn't you want to find yourself? Why wouldn't you want to go through these things? Why wouldn't you want to have a spiritual enlightening experience? It confused me. And I realized that you can't control people no matter how hard you try. You have to allow people to be who they are because that right there is true sovereignty. What I've learned is that there is a difference between liberty, sovereignty, and freedom. There's a difference between them. And I feel, at least in my personal experience, in my observation, that sovereignty is actually the balance between freedom and liberty. What's the difference? Liberty is something that has to be given to you. It's something that you don't necessarily know that you have. It's not necessarily innate. You're giving liberties. So this is where liberal comes from, right? Liberties, you know, there are certain, they're like, they're like your rights that you probably don't even know that you have, but you have the liberty to do these things, right? And then you have freedom. Liberty, in many ways, I like to see it as more of like a collective thing, more of like the masses kind of thing. Freedom is when you try to break out of that masses and really try and be yourself and free. But the only problem is, is that a lot of times you take it to the other extreme. When it comes to freedom, we still want to, you have free and then you have dumb. So there is still some type of domination or dominion that's going on with freedom. Now a lot of times what happens is that those who want, who want to be free will project their ideology on those who have certain liberties. Those who, who may not necessarily know what it means to be free. But I don't think freedom is necessarily the answer either. I think freedom I think people, a lot of times what will happen, will bounce back and forth. I think what happens with an enlightenment experience, I think what happened with 2012 and the spiritual experiences that people have been having, is I think people went from having liberties to wanting to be free, wanting to completely take themselves out of the systems, the matrix, the societies, the structures. They wanted to be completely free not realizing that there is still divinity within those systems, even though in many ways they are still in their infantile elementary-like states. There is still a purpose there. And I have bounced back and forth between these, but it's truly sovereignty that we are looking for. Sovereignty is being able to flow between both worlds. Sovereignty is recognizing these liberties, I guess you could say, and not being afraid of 
being controlled. Uh, it, it's sort of like an example, and I'm going to give myself a perfect example right now, right? Because this is something that I feel like is really pertinent. Wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Right now, I, I prefer not to wear a mask. I, I just prefer not to wear a mask, okay? So I want to be free in that sense, okay? I guess you could say I have the liberty to choose to not wear a mask, but I think that's more of like a freedom thing. I think liberty is more like, I think liberties we can give up and we can gain back. True sovereignty is an individual who doesn't see wearing a mask as censorship and doesn't see not wearing a mask as overcoming censorship, but a true sovereign being is someone who will be like, sure, I'll put on the mask. It doesn't really affect who I am as a soul and as a spiritual being. And sure, I won't wear the mask because not wearing the mask does the same thing, does not affect who I am as a soul and as a spiritual being. That's a good example. For someone who is truly sovereign, it's a spiritual, it could be a spiritual individual that can have fun doing the things that may not seem as spiritual, such as go to the club or go to a sporting event, but also will turn around and meditate under a tree or go to the lake or whatever, or I don't know if go to lake, but meditate under a tree or do breath work or whatever. Someone who's able to flow. The, the, the truly sovereign being is someone who doesn't see anything that can really impede upon their journey, but can also appreciate those that still engage with those activities that those who want to call themselves free, those who call themselves free look at people that have liberties and say that you don't get it and vice versa. Someone who is sovereign can be like, I'll engage with both worlds because that is that lends to a true sense of being one's own being and being able to flow between the worlds. One of my observations, my second observation out of these three is that we can't control people. We have to allow people to be. And when it comes to those of us who are on a self-proclaimed spiritual journey and those of us who want to share our observations and or teach and or heal, we can only do so to the degree that we are able to teach, help, and heal ourselves. And all we have to do is put the message out there. We, should, we can't force it on people's throats, no matter how hard we try. Even if we're well-intentioned, even if we think it's coming from a positive space or a pure space, we have to allow people to be who they are. And... We also have to realize that, and it's funny because people who are free a lot of times don't want to associate with people who simply have liberties or have to be informed of their rights because they feel like they're just not going to see eye to eye. But someone who is sovereign can be on both sides. They can have friends on both sides because they're one with all of it. They're sovereign. They are truly uniquely themselves. And they know that just simply being themselves and expressing their truth is going to attract whoever needs to hear that message, no matter what side of the equation they are or whether they are balanced in the middle. That's the second thing I've learned, my second observation for my Saturn return. My third observation is having to deal with the realm of thoughts and just letting your thoughts be. I have been learning more on how to simply observe my thoughts and it has not been easy. I'm going to take you back a little bit to before my Saturn return. I talk about the fact that I lived in Colorado for a year. I talk about that a lot and how incredible of an experience that was. I do feel like as far as that goes, I attempted to skip steps in my spiritual journey. And because I tried to skip steps in my spiritual journey, I had to come back to my homeland, Georgia, <laughs> where I grew up. I had to come back here so I can relearn who I was and so I can make up and go back to the steps that I had skipped. But right now, I feel like I am progressing forward in a more natural and pure way. 
but I had a mental breakdown towards the end of my time in Colorado because I was so caught up on my thoughts and over identifying with them to the point of paranoia, <laughs> to the point of severe paranoia. I allowed my thoughts to consume me and I thought I was my thoughts. I believed I was my thoughts. I really did. And I am still kind of clawing my way out of this paradigm. But as the years have progressed since moving back in 2017, and now that I'm in 20, now that we are in 2020, now that we're in this time frame, I am learning more and more to not overly identify with my thoughts and to just allow my thoughts to be. To realize that these thoughts are just electrical signals and that they are signaling something. They are pointing to something like a sign, like the astrological signs, they are all signals, right? So Aquarius, you gotta think this is, this is air, this is a mental thing, right? And it's fixed air, right? So what happened is that the structure of this sort of ment of this sort of mental faculty. And I don't have a lot of air energy. I have Venus and Libra and I have Saturn and Aquarius, okay? Right? So I don't have a lot of air energy. I have like nothing in Gemini, right? So I only have fixed air and cardinal air. So it's like I don't have I have this it's it's been hard for me to adapt <laughs> the way that I think. I can only really do this when I meet someone who has Gemini energy or if the moon goes into Gemini and crosses that space. So as far as like my mind goes, like the actions that I take and the initiations that I take based off of my thoughts, Venus and Libra, which really is one, it's something, it's like me wanting to really relate to people. It really is. Like I want to relate to people. I want to keep the peace. I'm a, it's a peacekeeping kind of energy, you know. And then you got Saturn Aquarius, which is this sort of high minded kind of energy, but then there's structure, but the structure broke down. And when the structure broke down, I had to go, I had, I could only rely on my Venus and Libra. I can only rely on trying to relate to people. And then I found out I couldn't necessarily relate to a lot of people. So then there was a point where it, within my mind, I was over identifying with so much because my natural tendency is to try and investigate literally everything. I am an investigator at heart. Okay. I'm always trying to figure, I feel like, especially in my dream world, I'm always trying, I'm like investigating. And it's not necessarily investigating with like a magnifying glass and like a trench coat going around looking for clues. It's a different kind of investigation. Investing in myself, I guess you can say, right? I'm actually very investiga investigating. Um, and this has caused me to build up a conspiracy in my mind against myself. And what I'm noticing that that conspiracy in my mind against myself, especially this year, especially now that I got my sad return, is collapsing as well. So not only was my mental framework going into Colorado, and then at, subsequently afterward, not only did that mental framework collapse because I can't, e I don't even know how, I can't even remember how I thought before going to Colorado, and now that I'm back, I can't even remember how I thought right when I got back. So my framework has actually shifted <laughs> with this sudden return. I don't think the same way that I did before. I don't think the same way I did before Colorado or while I was in Colorado or even immediately after Colorado. I don't think the same way anymore. This conspiracy that I built up in my head <laughs> against myself about who I am or what I am, it is collapsing because of this sudden return and it has been a bit scary at times but i am fortunate but i am what i am so happy about is that i did between 2017 and now i have done a lot of work on myself as far as like shadow work and mental work whatever like that and trying to heal i've done so i have done a considerable amount of work that has actually prepared me for this sudden return if I had not done the work, if I had not gotten the help that I needed to, but also really dig deep and work on myself and be honest with myself, I probably would be in a, like a mental hospital right now. I probably would be. 
I've had some panic attacks and some anxiety attacks since then, but like they're mo they're mostly I'm not gonna say under control because if I'm I'm not necessarily trying to control them. I I'm I, I want to let them out when they come out because it's like a detox, but it's happening less and less frequently now. So I am thankful for what happened. I'm thankful for these mental paradigms collapsing and for me not to overly identify with my thoughts. Your thoughts are simply your thoughts and we have to just look at them and just let them be. We have to let them flow and it's hard to let them flow for me because as I've said, Saturn is, my Saturn is in Aquarius, which is a fixed air sign. So Aquarius, even though it can be a rather free, a liberal or sovereign kind of energy, uh, Aquarius that is fixated on what they believe to be true is a very super incredibly headstrong. Believe me, I know I'm married to one. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, uh, it's an energy that I have learned to embrace, enjoy, and we are going to the age of Aquarius after all. I think those of us who are getting their Saturn return right now are experiencing a lot of what the age of Aquarius has to hold for humanity. The main thing is that for those of us who happen to be getting their Saturn return right now, who have Saturn in Aquarius and since we're going into the age of Aquarius, we're going to experience in internally 2,000 something plus years of Aquarius age energy in the span of a few years. So to those of you <laughs> who have sat in Aquarius, it's okay. You are built for this moment and you are equipped to handle this moment, right? And you're going to have some pretty off the wall crazy thoughts. You probably have some sort of off the wall crazy conspiracy about yourself and how you relate to the collective and how you are seen by the collective. You probably have some sort of crazy off the wall conspiracy. And of course, depending upon your cosmological makeup, you may deal with it in different ways, right? Those of you who have Gemini energy may be more malleable to not allowing your thoughts to just run you. Like myself, it's a little bit harder because I don't have any Gemini energy. I have to rely on Gem or people around me that had Gemini energy or whenever the moon transits that spot, you know? And then, of course, you have Libra, which is like this cardinal energy. What do you really want to do about it? When I think of cardinal energy, I think of initiation, I think of action. So what do you want to really do about these thoughts, right? What I've learned is that if I have a thought that comes through that I don't necessarily particularly like, I'm learning more and more to just let it be and to observe it and to try and figure out why, what, what is the signal for this. Maybe even celebrate it. Celebrate the fact that I've never really had that thought before, especially if I, especially if I never had the thought before. Just be like, well, I never really thought about it like that before. And I've had a lot of those moments since I was gone to Aquarius. I like, I never really thought it. I never really thought that way before. I never really thought about it that way before. I think a lot of times what it is is that we have uncomfortable thoughts. Because I don't think there's any thought that's inherently bad or good. I think we have rather uncomfortable thoughts. We have to ask ourselves, why is that thought uncomfortable? What tr comfort are we trying to seek right now? But it's really about just allowing ourselves to be. But I get it because we live in a society where so many people are throwing their voice around and it's kind of hard to get back to our own voice. That's why it's really important to be by ourselves, to journal, to write, to meditate, whatever it is. That's why I think it's really important to do those things. And as far as these thoughts, just to let them sim just simply be. Even celebrate them. Celebrate that you have these thoughts. Celebrate them. Even the negative ones. Even the ones that you perceive to be negative. We should celebrate these thoughts. It's an electrical signal that's being given to us. And it's a sign of our aliveness as well, if you think about it. You're, you're, you're receiving some type of electrical signal. And here's the thing. Thoughts don't exist here, okay? They don't just exist here 
right? They exist all over our body. Some of the thoughts that we have are coming from here. Some of the thoughts that we have are coming from our shoulder. Some of the thoughts that we have are coming from our knees. Some of the thoughts that are coming from our back. Some of the thoughts that we have are coming from our ass. We're listening to different parts of our body. Our body is communicating to us. So if you get a particular thought that you don't necessarily get or resonate, and then you try to run away from it, you're actually running away from a part of yourself. And simply just allow that part to be. If that part needs to cry out to you, caress it and have compassion for that space, for that part of you, and allow it to just cry and let it out. Just let it be. I have learned that through release, through a release, especially like an emotional release, I have learned that it actually has allowed me to not necessarily clear my mind, but to be okay with the flow of thoughts that come through. And there are moments, of course, where you do want to clear your mind and stuff like that, but it's about being okay with the flow that's coming through. I think that's what true clarity of mind is. When thoughts that come through, whatever like that, we can be okay with it. We can be okay with it. So, those are my three observations so far during my Saturn return. I hope that you all enjoyed this or so gained some type of, you know, benefit out of this. And let me know your thoughts if you are going through your Saturn return right now or if you've had your Saturn return. I think, of course, it's different for everybody. And, of course, it's different for, like, the sign. But everyone still has a different astrological makeup. Like, you may have the same Saturn as someone, but y'all's moon signs could be completely different or sun signs or whatever like that. Things could be completely different. That's the cool thing about it is that like since astrology is always changing and moving and shifting, it lends to such a unique perspective that each and every one of us has, even those who are born seconds apart, because those seconds are still cycles. <laughs> you know, there are cycles within seconds, within minutes, within hours, within days, within weeks within months, within years, within decades, centuries, so forth. So each and every one of us, I truly believe, are unique expressions of this sort of, uh, what I'm calling now, the universe, I'm calling it this electrical oneness. That's what I've been calling it lately because I really do feel like electricity is super freaking important. But we are part of this electrical oneness, this electrical fabric, universe, whatever you want to call it. You know, one of many verses, right? And we are all very unique expressions of that energy, of that truth. And all expressions carry that truth with them, you know. And in order for us to really see, in order for us to really unite, because I feel like it's really about, I really feel like kindness and finding the kin within kindness is so important right now, which is why we as humanity are a little far behind, but we are about to kind of get like a bit of a boost and it's going to be rather intense for all of us. But I think we should celebrate this boost that's coming up and this update that's coming up. But... These are my observations, my three observations so far. Um, there's more, but these are the three that came to mind. And it was funny, too, because um, the first two I knew before this video, like right before this, like well before this video. The third one I had, I needed a little bit more time. So I actually went through this little book right here. And I just chose a random page to look at what was going on. And it was talking about your thoughts and just letting them be and celebrating your thoughts and just let them flow. And I'm like, that's so very important because... That's probably the one that I'm probably having the most resistance to, honestly, because I couldn't think of it immediately. I had some resistance to it. And uh, going back to the first one, you know, very positive things can come through adversity. And going back to the second one, you cannot control, you cannot control people no matter how hard you try. <clears throat> Which means I cannot control my thoughts no matter how hard I try. <clears throat> I cannot control them. How hard I cannot control them. As, as hard as I want to, I can't control them. I just gotta let them be. And we can't really control ourselves either. We have to just let ourselves be and just flow. So, anyways, I love you all so much. Y'all take care, stay blessed, and I will see you all 
very, very soon. Peace out, guys.